The story might start like a proper romance, where you meet at a ball and you have a dance. Or the story might start in the modern manner, where you meet at a club, both absolutely langer. Or maybe at a gaff for your friend's birthday. You said you'd drop in for an hour, but decided to stay. Because when you went to the kitchen for a glass for your drink, you nearly melted at the man standing by the sink. So the story kind of starts like a proper romance, with sexual electricity from first glance. Of all the people that you meet, it's definitely rare to set eyes on someone and feel immediately ensnared. So you smile at him, but you're feeling unprepared because when you woke up this morning, what you chose to wear was a raggy pair of jeans and an old T-shirt. Sure, why would you bother getting dressed up for work? So though he looks like a dream, this feels like a mare because you've no makeup on, haven't touched your hair in a raggy pair of jeans and an old t-shirt. A raggy pair of jeans and an old t-shirt. But despite raggy jeans and old t-shirt, you decide to make it work and go over and flirt. It turns out he's sound and you hang out all night and you start to feel warm and fuzzy inside. And it's more than the five pints of cider you've imbibed. <laughs> it's not like you're thinking of being a bride. I mean, you don't even usually bat for his side but you can feel your mind start to fantasize that one day you and he might get a coffee. And eventually you two do kiss and enjoy a few moments on each other's lips that have you thinking that a lifetime on his hips wouldn't be time badly spent. Now you're actively not looking for a relationship because you're far too terrified to commit and you're too young and fuck that shit. But still, before you leave, you give him your digits. Now, as we all know, waiting for a text to come your way is a fast-track channel to going insane, willing your screen to light up with his name, wondering whether he's playing games. And then after day three, you know what the truth is, but it felt kind of real, so you make up excuses. He's not much of a texter. His phone broke. He's busy at work. He might have had a stroke searching for a reason and denying the truth that he's just not that into you. You want to text him first, but the girls say, no, you've got to consider the male ego. But in the pub one Friday, after you've had a few, you compose the kind of message he could not misconstrue. When he doesn't write back, he's not playing cool. It's cause he's just not that into you. Then a follow request which you think is a sign that you both had wrong numbers this entire time. He's been texting you daily, getting no replies. So you accept the request and wait for him to say hi. But he doesn't. And not long after that, he likes one of your pics, which has you wondering whether he is actually a thick or just a malicious mind-fucking dick. Once again, you're ignoring the obvious truth that he's just not that into you. Because it's not that hard to send a text. But you say, maybe he's still getting over his ex. Or maybe he's really religious and can't have sex, but knew that if he spent time with a goddess like me, he would be too tempted. Yeah, you're ready to think of any excuse, except he's just not that into you. So you call him a dickhead, an idiot, a fool claim that parts of him are minuscule, but you won't ever know that to be false or true, because there isn't gonna be a rendezvous, because he's just not that into you. Say it, he's just not that into you. He's just not that into you.